One of the first topics we talked about in this class was the topic of the atom. We learned that the atom contains electrons, protons and neutrons. We also learned about atomic orbitals, that they have various shapes and various energies, and about electric configurations, and how different electric configurations relate to the different properties of the elements. We also learned that if you put two atoms together or more atoms together, you can form polyatomic compounds, for instance, polyatomic anions or molecules. We learned about molecular formulas and ways to represent the structure of the molecule, for instance, through a line structure. We also learned about quantities of molecules, atoms and ions. We learned about the mole and about the molar mass and how the molar mass relates grams to moles and moles to grams. But what we didn't learn about so far is a very important topic in chemistry, which is the interaction between molecules and chemical reactivity, chemical reactions. Here are two hydrogen molecules, 2H2. These two molecules can react with an oxygen molecule, O2, to form two new compounds, two water molecules. This is a chemical reaction. We see three molecules on the left forming two molecules on the right. In this process, the atoms of the reactants are rearranged to form new compounds, which we call the products. Now, chemical reactions take place all around us. In fact, in your body right now, thousands of reactions are taking place that keep you alive. Another famous example is photosynthesis, which happens in leaves of plants. In photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water, with the assistance of sunlight, is converted into carbohydrates. Another famous example of a chemical reaction is taking place under the hood of your car. In the engine, a combustion reaction takes place. In a combustion reaction, hydrocarbons are converted into CO2 and H2O with the assistance of oxygen. So let's look at the combustion reaction a little bit more closely. Here's one. Here's methane. Methane can react with oxygen to form CO2 and H2O. This is a combustion reaction. And we can write this reaction as follows. On the left, I see CH4 and oxygen. Note that I also indicate the physical states of these compounds. They're all in the gas phase. The products are CO2 and H2O. So on the left, we see the reactants. And on the right, we see the products. Now, something is not quite right with the way it's written here. Because if I look carefully at the number of hydrogen atoms represented by the white spheres on the left, I count four. But on the right, I count only two. Also, for oxygen, I see two oxygens on the left, but I see three on the right. So the numbers don't add up. And that's because this reaction is not balanced. Let's look at the following situation. Let's take the same methane molecule and let it react with two oxygen molecules to form one CO2 and two water molecules. This reaction can be written as follows. One methane molecule plus two oxygen molecules forming one CO2 and two water molecules. Is this reaction balanced? Well, in order to find out, we have to count the number of atoms on the left and on the right. So let's look at the chemical equation here and count the number of carbon atoms. There's only one on each side. So the carbon atom is balanced on the left and on the right. What about the other atoms? What about hydrogen? Well, I count four on the left and I also count four on the right. Two for each water molecule. There's two water molecules. That means a total of four hydrogen atoms. Oxygen, I count four on the left. Two times O2 is four oxygens. And then on the right, I see two oxygens contributed by the water and two by the single carbon dioxide molecule. So this reaction is balanced. We have the same amount of atoms on the left as on the right. Now, balancing chemical equations is an important skill because balanced equations tell us something very important quantitatively about the reactions, as you will see in subsequent segments.